we're going to be using a digital capture oscilloscope to take a look at a foundation field bus waveform. As you can see right here, I've got a dual trace scope set up. Channel 1 is in yellow, and channel 2 is in blue. I'll set them on top of each other like this. I'm going to be using two channels to measure a foundation field bus signal because I do not want to connect a ground reference to my field bus. If I simply took one channel here with my probe and ground and I went across the field bus, I would be grounding one of those field bus conductors. I do not want to do that. So I want to do a uh, <coughs> differential measurement as opposed to a ground referenced measurement. So I'm going to take two different channels, two different probes, take the tip of each probe going to a respective conductor of the field bus system right there. You can see on the terminals of this transmitter, which is plugged in to our field bus brick over here. That's where our transmitter goes into that port of the brick. So now looking over here, we see the two signals. <coughs> now it's kind of a mess. I can speed this up a little bit, and you can see I can freeze this, for example. I can freeze it. You can see right here we have two waveforms that are completely out of phase. Every time the yellow goes up, the blue comes down, and vice versa. I don't want to look at that. I want to look at a composite waveform that shows me the difference between those two channels. So here's what I'm going to do. I'm going to go back to normal mode and sweep, and I'm going to set up a math function here that is going to look at the difference, channel 1 minus channel 2, the difference between those two inputs, and it will display that in red. And you can see that right now. We see that displaying uh, three waveforms, the yellow, which is channel 1, the blue, which is channel 2, and the red, which is the difference between them. So watch this. I'm going to go to single sweep and hit that a couple times until I freeze a, a burst of activity. So right there, we see red overlaid with yellow and blue. I can turn the yellow and the blue off. So all we see is the red, the difference between yellow and blue. And what I see here is a string, a series of pulses that is part of that foundation field bus waveform. Now start things back up again. Channel one, channel two, go back to normal coupling. I'm going to hit the single trace button a couple more times and try to capture a more interesting segment of waves. This is totally random as I hit this here. See which, here, there I go. This is a segment of, of waves right here. Looks like nice and symmetrical uh, ups and downs. Here we go. And let's try a single trace again. There we go. I want to capture the beginning of a uh, data frame if I can. There we go. This is interesting. So I'm going to turn channel 1 off now, channel 2 off, and I see the beginning of a field bus data frame. Here's when the network is quiet, and here's when it begins to talk. And I can take my horizontal control and move that over. The oscilloscope has buffered some of the waveform off to this side, so I can scroll it over and see what's been captured. It ends right there. It's where the scope's memory ends. You can see how every uh, this packet here begins with a nice symmetrical set of ups and downs. Now, I don't know all the details of foundation field bus frame structure, but it looks to me very similar to how Ethernet is done, where you begin the frame with a preamble of ones and zeros. Every single Ethernet, or every single field bus frame I've looked at with the scope begins the same way. A nice symmetrical series of ups and downs that are wide spaced, meaning there are Manchester highs and lows, ones and zeros, ones and zeros. They all start the same way. And then after a sequence of ones and zeros, the real data begins. So I'm going to go back to showing channel 1 and 2, go back to our menu, normal triggering, there we go, and you can see bursts of data on the field bus system. I want you to notice something else too. When I stop this, I'll go single trace, let me slow this down just a bit in my time division, go single trace again. I want you to notice something here. Notice how the red and the, uh, sorry, the uh, blue and the yellow both have kind of a wave shape to them. Notice how the, the blue and the yellow, back up a bit, blue and the yellow have a bit of a wave shape to them, how they're kind of you know, falling down and picking back up, whereas the red is nice and stable. I want to show this again. Here, here's a really good example. The blue and the yellow, the individual channels measuring voltage of reference to ground, show kind of a sine wave shape. We're looking at single ended ground referenced AC 60 hertz noise. That's what we see going on here with that, that gentle wave. Notice, however, the red line is nice and flat. That's because the red is me measuring the difference between those two conductors, whereas the yellow and the blue 
I'm measuring the single ended voltage between each conductor and ground. So we're getting 60 hertz noise from each conductor to ground equally. That's why when we measure between them in differential mode, it cancels out. And this is a very vivid example of how differential signal measurement tends to reject or ignore common mode noise, because that common mode noise is introduced on both conductors equally. And if we have 60 hertz noise on both conductors equally, yellow and blue equally going up and down, the difference between them will not see that noise. That's why the red is so nice and straight. Take away the yellow, take away the blue. What's left is a signal there that's nice and straight and practically noise-free because it's a difference between those two conductors, not ground-referenced.